you all know, I'm a big fan of Apple in general. I pretty much have every Apple device you can imagine and I have no complaints. Everything I need just works incredibly well within the Apple ecosystem. But after the Pixel event, I really wanted to experience what I believe is the ultimate Android experience at the moment. So I bought the Pixel 9 Pro XL and I'm honestly very impressed so far. But I'll take you through a day in a life with the Pixel so at least you can have an idea on how I use it and we can get over some of the features that made me have it as my dedicated phone. I haven't sold the iPhone by the way and I don't plan to do so, but I want to start using both to understand more of the Android Android world and who knows maybe now that we have RCS on the iPhone the whole switching experience is a lot easier than before but for now the Pixel 9 Pro XL will be my daily so we'll see how that goes okay guys I'm pretty sure you probably heard it already but the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the Pixel 9 Pro XL feel almost identical in hand many times I had it on my desk both of them because I was either transferring data or Simply just messing around with both to compare some of the, some details with the screen, the camera, and so on. And many times by accident, I picked the iPhone instead of the Pixel and vice versa, which is crazy. They're about the same size, and I think the Pixel is slightly, slightly taller, not by much. And I'm pretty sure also they weigh the same as well. I think the Pixel and the iPhone both are 221 grams, which is really interesting. I wonder if it was a... Uh, tactic from Pixel to try to persuade iPhone users to try Android for the first time, giving you that sense of familiarity, but it worked. I think that Pixel really did something special this year because I've never been truly attracted to any Android in that way when it comes to the design. Every time I had an Android, even though it has good features, good specs and everything, I always felt like the phones were not as good looking as the iPhone. Even though the iPhone really hasn't changed that much through couple of years already, we know that. But it's a design that, at least for me, feels timeless. The Pixel, I think that achieves something similar with this design. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I cannot wait to put it to the test and compare both side by side and many other aspects, but at least design wise, I love it so far. The side rails are really shiny. I'm not a big fan of them. At least in my experience, I haven't collected many fingerprints on them, but if they were matte, at least I think it would have looked a little bit more premium. But anyways, I'm running late. I need to go to the gym, so I'm gonna take you guys with me. And I might record a little bit inside the gym with the Pixel 9 Pro XL to test the camera and the video capabilities on that environment. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, let's go. So I'm going to the gym and I want to try to hit shoulders, but I honestly want to try something new. So let me try Gemini and see how that goes. It's going to be a live test. Hey, uh, I'm going to the gym right now and I'm going to work out shoulders. I'm kind of tired of my routine, so I want to try something new, especially to gain muscle mass. What do you recommend? So I can't give medical advice, but I can share some tips to switch things up. Try focusing on exercises that use multiple muscles at once. Things like push presses or those shoulder circuits that go from front to side to back. Oh, and just a reminder. I get that. So yeah, I, sorry. For those multi-muscle exercises, you let can me, try barbell or dumbbell let presses. Me, let me stop really you. Good. Let me stop you right there. I need a routine. So can you give me a couple exercises and a number of sets that I can follow? So at least have a decent workout when it comes to shoulders. Okay, here's a quick shoulder workout you can try. Since you mentioned wanting something new, I'm including two options, a classic and a little more advanced. First, try three sets of shoulder presses with either a barbell or dumbbells. Aim for a weight that feels heavy by your last few reps, like you can only do eight or 10. Next, standing up, do three sets of lateral raises, something like 12 to 15 reps per arm. If you want a little more of a challenge, try adding some front raises. That's where you raise your arms straight okay. out in front of you. I like, the, I like the workout, but how many reps do you recommend to gain muscle mass? Eight reps, 12 reps, or what do you think works best? Got it. So for straight muscle gains, you generally want to keep those reps in that 8 to 12 range. That's where you'll start seeing some serious growth. Now, if you want to try a different style of lifting, you could try higher reps like 15 or 20, but you'll have to adjust the weight you're using. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to try that workout and I'll see how it goes. Thank you. All right, awesome. Let me know how it goes. This is insane. I guess Gemini is our personal trainer now. <laughs> Okay, so let's try our workout out. Let me go to the gym.
trouble, it best be well. And though deep down, I know I might be headed for teardrops. Now that you got me started, I just can't stop. No, no. So the workout is done and yeah, it was good. The gym was crowded so I wish I could have recorded more, but it was pretty good. This is a test at 20 frames per second, by the way, 4K front camera with the, uh, I forgot the name of the feature, the one that isolates your voice and lets you sound better. I hope that the footage that I got at the gym is good enough for you guys to see the capabilities in that environment with the camera. With this, at least the front camera here in the car, it looks really good. I'm very surprised of how sharp it looks in the detail, the colors are really good too. I noticed a couple of things uh, at the gym with the zoom and the rear camera at least, that it was a little, I don't know, not super smooth in comparison with the iPhone. But I need to put it in DaVinci to see how everything looks to be able to judge later on. Obviously, it's not like ProRes Log, but I have high hopes on how everything is gonna be looking. On the other side, the photos look insane. Um, I think the Pixel has a tendency to lean more towards the shadows than the iPhone. When you take a picture with the Pixel, especially in dark environments, the processing of this phone is very good. I think, in my opinion, it looks better than the iPhone, at least for pictures, and I'll make sure to add some samples. The iPhone tend to favor the better exposure, so when you take pictures at night, the shadows are lifted and you see a little bit more, but again, I prefer this. Now the iPhone, from the test that I've done already, I can notice that it's a little bit warmer when the pixel lean more towards the cooler tones. But again, the white balance can also be modified later on in post when you edit your pictures in Lightroom, so it shouldn't matter too much. But at least how the photos come straight out of the camera, I prefer the pixel than the iPhone. But time will tell after more testing, I'll do a dedicated video for this. And I didn't do any uh, video boost on the ones that I recorded. It could have been better. But again, I don't think it's very practical because it takes forever to process that video. I'll put more tests on that video boost later on. Um, but yeah, for the purpose of this video, that'll be, I think, good enough for the initial first impressions. But yeah, I need to get some groceries. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. As you guys saw in the video in the gym, in that lower light environment, the rear camera struggled a little bit. And if I'm being honest with you, when I transferred that to DaVinci, it didn't really look that good. So I need to do a lot of grading to make things look decent. So next week I'm going to a trip where I'm gonna be using the Pixel in all its capabilities to actually give you guys a proper Pixel 9 Pro XL review. I'm going to the wedding, so it's gonna be perfect to use the video enhancing feature, the zoom enhancing and all that stuff to give you guys the best information before you actually purchase this phone. But of course, with all the tech that I carry with me all the time, which is my phone, my battery packs and all the extra stuff, the accessories that I bring with me, my computer, etc., you, you name it, I couldn't fly or go anywhere without having also a really nice luggage. So that's where the sponsor of this video comes in, level eight. This is the Hedgen carry-on luggage and it's awesome for the way that I travel while providing a classy minimal design. I usually prefer to travel light, but my previous bag didn't last very long since they were usually built poorly. You guys can probably relate to that. However, this Hedgen carry-on luggage has sturdy impact resistant aluminum frame and durable exterior made out of German-made polycarbonate material called Macrolon. This ensures it can withstand numerous trips while keeping your bag sturdy and looking great for longer. The wheels are also very quiet, making it easy to move around since they feature a 360 degree rotation that will help you navigate busy airports with ease. Now my favorite part of the luggage, which is the dual TSA approved zipperless lock. Both of them you can easily access by putting your 
three digit code and pressing the two buttons on the side. Honestly, after having this, I don't think I could go back to a regular luggage with zippers. And most importantly, it has a well organized interior that keeps your clothing and accessories safe. You have this X strap compression system to keep everything in place, but you can always remove it if you prefer. I personally like it since it gives me more pockets to pack my travel accessories along with some tech that I want to bring with me. So if you guys are interested in the Hedgen carry on luggage from level eight, I'll leave a link down in the description so you guys can check it out. Thank you, level eight, for sponsoring this video. Okay, I moved back to the office because the light was super inconsistent over there. But, anyways, these are my final thoughts about the Pixel 9 Pro XL, at least for the first couple of days that I've been using it. Okay, the i features are actually really impressive. I enjoy using Magic Eraser, the Magic Editor, and all the other cool things that came with the Pixel, especially Gemini Advance, as you guys saw how impressive it was. The battery lasts all day, but it's hard to say how good it is because I'm pretty sure the phone is still getting used to the way I use it. So, the battery life may change over time. But so far, it doesn't feel any different than my iPhone, which is a great thing. It lasts all day, which is all I can ask for. Speakers are actually good in a way, but bad in others. It's very loud, but it's not too clear in comparison with the iPhone. Honestly, it's not something that many people will notice. So I will say that they're overall good. They sound loud, which is probably the most important thing for most people. So I think they're fine. I think the Tencent G4 is mostly there to be efficient towards AI applications, even though I've never had an issue with the phone in navigating apps, using social media, the phone feels snappy, and it's easily a great contender for people looking to switch to Android. This is so similar to iPhone in terms of design, weight, and size. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm not very good at vlogging or anything like that, so that's why it was a little short of a day in the life. Most importantly, I hope that you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.